The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAQ, on Friday said it was concerned about claims of drugs and vaccine for COVID-19 on social media, saying it had not granted approval for any remedy for the pandemic. The Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Haniri, and Director General of the Center for Disease Control, Chikwe Ihekwazu, has said that the World Health Organization had not come up with any cure for COVID-19. According to them, despite claims of traditional remedy by people, the Nigerian Institute for Pharmaceuticals Research and Development had yet to come up with a result. The Director General of NAFDAQ, Professor Mojishala Adeye, said in a statement that the organization had not given approval to any product from any company or individual to cure COVID-19. She said, and I quote, the agency is concerned about reports on social and other media of drugs or vaccines to cure COVID-19. Joining us live via Skype is Professor Oyewale Tomori, who is a professor of virology, to take a look at this matters. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Amaka. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Very fine. Great. Uh, now, there is ongoing conversation, as you know, around the use of chloroquine. And both NAVDAQ and World Health Organization have said they, they have not agreed on any cure. Now, should we also resort or begin to explore the possibility of applying indigenous knowledge? In this case, maybe traditional remedies, say herbs? Yeah, certainly yeah, we should. Uh, but according to what the NAPDAC said, uh, this must be passed through proper processing. Uh, it's not just somebody claiming that it works and then we then begin to use it. There are standard procedures for checking whatever anybody says is cure. There are clinical trials, there are steps to be taken, and all our colleagues who are claiming, and I have not, nothing against their claims, but they should subject them to the proper process and get either the NAFDAQ or whoever is responsible to approve it before we start putting it out on the road on social media. All right. As a virologist, uh, what does it take to have our own experts study and research all to do with this virus and possibly profess solutions? The, the problem with us in Nigeria is not the experts. There are enough, many experts in different places. But the problem is creating the enabling environment for them to practice their trade. The, the, by that I mean have the good science laboratories, have the, 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 the conducive environment, power supply, electric supply, and all those things. We can't take research out of the general station of the country. And therefore, so long as the country is what it is, level of underdevelopment, so long will our science be underdeveloped. A lot of our colleagues who are going out of the country and in the diaspora, they're not going because the situation in Nigeria is good. They are leaving because they cannot practice what they need to practice because the environment does not allow them to do that. And I dare any of them who are outside the diaspora to come back to Nigeria and see where they will succeed because the situation, they left because the situation was bad, the situation has grown worse, and so, you know, any attempt like we're doing now to bring the diaspora back is putting the cart before the horse. We must repair the home, create that environment for the people to function. We have more than enough scientists in this country who can do what they need to do, but we need to have the conducive environment for them to function. Right. The, the, the numbers are skyrocketing, Professor. Is that suggesting that this virus may be deadlier than we know, or did we miss out anything at some point? You know, of course, I mean, the, the, the numbers will continue to rise. We're dealing with it. Arrows that come through droplets, through contact with uh, contaminated surfaces. It, it increases the chances of infecting more people. Unlike some of the other virus diseases that require maybe a vector, take yellow fever, for example, you need to have been beaten by a mosquito, or take malaria, for example. And so, you know, that's quite different. This doesn't require any vector in between. It is between person to person. I sneeze, I cough, I give it to you, and therefore it's easy to spread. And when you have a large congestion of people, population of people living together in a closed space, it increases uh -huh. the chances of, uh, of, of getting more of the cases. If we do not change our attitude, some of the things we do in terms of hygiene and things of that nature, I, I think I'm sure we're going to get much more than we're getting right now. All right. Thank you so very much, Professor, for your time. And please do keep safe where you are. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'll do that. You too. Keep All safe. Right. Thank you very much.